Welcome to another episode of Kotlin Bytes. In this episode, we're going to be talking about helper functions, specifically on strings, lists, collections, etc. And I really want to show you how Kotlin has added these functions to help aid in very simple and mundane tasks. And to do so, I've created three examples. The first one is to find the leftmost digit that occurs in a given string. So I've set up uh, just a simple test here to make sure that they are equaling the correct value. So the first digit takes in as input a string and we have to find the first digit that it appears. So not the first number, but the first digit uh, to emphasize this, if I have a number 95, uh, the result should still be 9 because we're looking for the first digit. Let's solve this. So if I go to this definition, okay, so it said as a to do. Uh, what can we do? Well, traditionally with something like Java, you would iterate over every item in the string and then find the first character. That's a number. However, with Kotlin, there's some built-in helper functions that will help accelerate this process. Check out how many helper functions we have here. Some of these are old functions that were part of uh, the string object, but some of them are built into collections, built into text extensions that Kotlin brings to the table, and they're very powerful. This problem is going to involve us using the first function. If we use first with the parentheses, it's going to get the first character in the string. However, if we use the first with the closure notation, we can actually choose um, a condition in which the item is returned. So in this case, if this condition is true, the first time that this condition is true, it's going to return that item. So if it is. And here's some other func helper functions that we have. Uh, it is a character and we have a couple options here. So if it's a letter, if it's a letter or digit or a digit, digit is what we want to use. Um, if it's lowercase, title case, etc. So we have a lot of options here, but all we need is, is it a digit? And that's what we're looking for. And if we run this, we can test it. Don't mind the error. The error is for the other two problems. We can see that nine should equal nine, and it and it does. That's coming from here. Okay, on to number two. Given a string, find the number of different characters in it. If you're like me, you may want to try to solve this before I reveal the answer. Uh, yeah, so go ahead. Once you're ready, you can continue the video. Okay, let's solve it. So different symbols. Problem here is that we're, we have to pull apart the string and then, then we have to count all the different types of characters that are placed in it. And Kotlin allows us to do this very quickly. All we need to do is type s dot group by. It's another helper function. Group by is inside the strings kt class. So it's a strings helper function. And we're going to group by each character. So it right now represents a character. If you're on a PC, you, you can press control and then hover over it and you can, you can see what type it is. If you're on a Mac, you can press the command key and hover. So we're gonna group by the characters and what we need is the number of different characters. So if you hover over group, it shows that we're gonna create a map um, of key K. So we're gonna create the key here. So what this is doing is it's taking it's finding all common keys. We're defining the key. And it's taking that item, like the whole item, uh, and placing it into a list. It's definitely a, a weird use case. However, it works for our purpose. And all we have to do is 
calculate the size of that hash map, uh, we're basically counting the number of keys that we've provided. So if we run this, different symbols, h should equal eight. So groups the L's, groups the O's, uh, and yeah, that's it. It's including the space, <laughs> just in case you're curious. So the space is its own unique character. On to the third problem. So let's say you have a bunch of players as objects, and I've defined player down below, and you want to sum all their points, all of their player points, uh, but they're nested with inside an object. Uh, there's a helper function for this. Let's solve this problem. Again, if you want to solve this problem, before I reveal it, you can. Okay, let's begin. Var arg means that this is this function has an implicit array of players, of type player. And so what you saw up here was that I could I could enter players one by one that are comma separated and they populate this variable players as an array which is great because that allows me to uh, use all the collection and array helper functions on it. So there's a helper function called sum by, which means it's going to sum a, a number or a value uh, by some criteria that we give it. And that's defined in this closure. So again, the it keyword is going to be the player that we're referencing, uh, each individual item. And then we're going to select points. So we're going to take the points variable from the player for each player, and we're going to add them up. Okay, and that's it for this one. Some points, run it. And there you go. Uh, you can see that uh, these numbers add up to 119. And yeah, there you go. Those are three examples of helper functions upon strings, collections, uh, lists and arrays. There are tons of them. I'm not gonna show you examples of all of them. Look them up yourself. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description for some of the documentation on it. But honestly, just use an IDE like IntelliJ IDEA and uh, explore for yourself. It's It can be a lot of fun. If you have any questions or if you want me to give an example on a particular helper function, leave that in the comments. Otherwise, have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching.